Well, finally, let's discuss niche two study. Since the inception, this one has been practice changing, which has shown remarkable results for MSI high patient population. Kristen, can you please walk us through this update and importantly, its implications in your practice? Yeah, so niche two is part of a larger a platform of studies um, that we've seen over time. We also saw the niche three study at ESMO this year um, as well. But um, Miriam Shabi presented the update to niche two, uh, which was essentially um, enrolling patients with MSI high um, colon cancer. And so instead of going straight to surgery, they did receive nivolumab and ipilimumab. Um, it, they they got one cycle of the combination, then they got an additional dose of nivolumab and then went straight to surgery. So prior data that we had seen showed just impressive waterfall plots with um, about two thirds of patients, even with this limited amount of neoadjuvant therapy, actually receiving, um, achieving a pathologic complete response. So as with any of these um, neoadjuvant studies, we really need to see d disease-free survival data. And that's what Miriam uh, presented at this meeting and uh, a new form of a Chalabi plot, so to speak, <laughs> not just the, the waterfall plot, but actually oh. this complete completely flat line of 100% three-year disease-free survival. So really impressive. Um, when you compare that to historical data in terms of patients who got who had stage three MSI high disease, there are still recurrences and we, we still give those patients chemotherapy. Of course, we're awaiting um, the adjuvant data um, in Atomic to try to see if chemo plus immunotherapy is better. But you know, this may be trumping that in the sense that maybe we just give a little bit of neoadjuvant immunotherapy. You know, an additional data point, a kind of a secondary endpoint that they looked at was ctDNA clearance. So um, interestingly, most of the patients did have ctDNA positivity. So we always wonder, okay, what's the sensitivity of this technology? Um, by cycle two of immunotherapy, about half of patients had uh, cleared their ctDNA. And then by the time of surgery, 83% had. And by the MRD endpoint, which was three weeks after surgery, all patients had cleared their ctDNA. So it just gives, a, gives us an additional um, bit of information or um, additional data point to follow uh, in addition to scans for patients. I think we all need to take a second to appreciate 100 percent three-year <laughs> disease-free survival. This is remarkable. This is exciting. But Kristen, coming back in this MSI high space, we have a few options here. Single agent Pembro, a short course of Epinevo, as we're seeing here in niche two. Outside clinical trials, what is your preference? And then we're touching on the ctDNA. If a patient has ctDNA negative disease, can we forgo surgery? Mm. That's a great question. Those are great questions, actually. So um, I still do prefer, uh, there are ongoing clinical trials in this space, and I always prefer that because we do need sure. more data, to be believe it or not. I, I think Dr. Shabi mm -hmm. has kind of raised the bar, certainly, with our data, um, but uh, but I think we there there are still unanswered questions, including, as you mentioned, um, do we need doublet immunotherapy? Do we need um, what duration do we need? Do we even need to do surgery at all? Can we can we treat patients with immunotherapy only? So there are a lot of unanswered questions here. Um, in terms of the ctDNA, um, you know, relying on that, I'm not quite ready to rely on ctDNA um, solely to make treatment decisions um, because it, it's not a perfect uh, technology yet, um, but it is improving and hopefully we'll get there. Um, but I do use it as an uh, additional data point um, understanding certainly the limitations of what it can mean. Well, Dr. Sionbor, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts around these key abstracts from ESMO 2024 in GI space. For our listeners, let us go over a quick recap. In this discussion, we had the opportunity to focus on four key abstract studies from ESMO 2024 with Dr. Kristen Sionbar from the Vanderbilt University. We've covered the LEAP012 study in HCC with TACE, Lenvatinib, and Pembrolizumab. We'll eagerly wait on mature OS benefit here before this is widely adapted in our clinical practice. Then we had a chance to discuss Keynote 811, the current standard of care for our HER2 positive GE junction gastric adenocarcinoma. Now we're seeing an improved overall survival benefit with Pembrolizumab chemotherapy and Trastuzumab. This update continues to reinforce this as our current standard of care option. We also covered podium study for metastatic or unresectable anal cancer. 
given overall survival improvement, chemotherapy with IO is now going to be our standard of care. To end, we touched on the success story of NISH2 trial, where we see 100% disease-free survival for our MSI high patients with immunotherapy at three years. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check out our conference highlights and discussions around the current standard of care. We are the Oncology Brothers.